Hello, yes, this is Michael and it is Lyric Hi-Fi, but it's a different corner of Lyric Hi-Fi. So over the past little while, we've put together a museum corner. So we've got older things behind me, old Linz, Luxmans, SMEs, Rogers, BBC loudspeakers, uh, what else, Bush radios, Philips radios, uh, Radford valve amplifiers, just cool stuff that we have about where it's not really there to sell it. It's just because it's pretty and interesting and we can talk to people about it. And we've taken a wee bit of a break, so it's now July. So Belfast is tropically warm, tropically warm. Um, start with a bit of housekeeping. Um, thank you for watching. If you've seen this before, I haven't seen this before, do subscribe, press the buttons, whatever, do all that kind of stuff. I also uh, would like to start with a shout out to Janine and Paul, if you're watching. This is the day after I was at your house and had far too much to eat and far too much wine. So thanks for that, Paul. Um, it means that today I actually might have notes for doing our topic because, uh, well, it was a good night. So today we're going to talk about cartridges. A cartridge is a little thing that goes into a record and gets the sound out of it. So how does this work? Now people say, oh, you know, uh, it all does this and it goes down a groove and it does all that. But really think about this. That black plastic disc has grooves in it and we all know that. And those grooves have undulations and hills and twists and turns. And that is where the music is stored. And the thing that brings that out is called a cartridge. And here's a cartridge. And it's got a wee tiny, tiny cantilever, which is the bit the stylus goes into and a bit at the other end, which is a generator to generate the sound. And it's just, you know, it's magical if you try to think about how this does work. So most people think, oh, it tracks the groove and it's all very dainty and it flows down the groove, but actually it's brutal. It's like going down a bobsleigh run. This thing is flying down this run and getting hit from side to side. And it's even worse than that, because it's like in a bobsleigh run where the bobsleigh is stationary and the run the groove is driving you. It's actually pushing you from side to side, violently. And these undulations and these vibrations are what have to be picked up by this tiny, tiny little stylus. And that stylus has forces on it of between three and four tons per square inch. It's enormous, it's enormous. So because of that, the construction of, of a cartridge it's very important to have a cantilever that's rigid and to have a stylus the right shape and to be able to pick up every little bit without things being bent and moving and stuff. So if you think about this as being your stylus, this being a pivot, and this end being your generator, you do want this to move about, to bend. So that's why the most expensive ones are made of fancy materials like borons and things, and a lot of them would be tapered aluminium, and this has to move like this. It goes up and down and side to side. And this movement is where it then gets turned into electricity. So effectively, this is a generator. People call it a, a transducer, that's a fancy name for it. It turns one form of energy movement into another electricity. It's the opposite of a loudspeaker. A loudspeaker, you put in electricity and you get movement. This you put in movement and you want to get electricity. I think, well, how does this work? Well, I'm old enough to have gone to school and we did a thing called O-Levels. And in my physics O-Level, they did a thing about moving iron and moving coil instruments that I've never forgotten. Because you get moving iron, moving magnet cartridges, and you get moving coil cartridges. And the thing about these is that when you, whenever it's a moving magnet, you have a magnet here and fixed coils and it's a moving coil, the coils are wound on this, and it's fixed magnets. Really simple, so why do you have both? Okay, so the masses involved in this are important, and if you have a, a magnet on this, you can have quite a light, powerful magnet and fixed coils, and you can have lots of coils, and that will generate more voltage, and you get more signal out, and that means that further down the line in the phono stage, you're getting more voltage out, it's a different thing, it's easier to amplify. So the output of a moving magnet cartridge is about five millivolts. That's five thousandths of a volt. So if you think of your wee batteries, one and a half volt, like a thousandth of that. So uh, 
it's a fairly tiny voltage that's coming off in a moving magnet. But if you've got a moving coil, instead of having lots of coils that are fixed, the coils actually have to be wound onto this and the wires have to come out. And because of that, you can't add too much mass. So the output of a moving coil cartridge is typically 150 microvolts. So it's an order of magnitude much smaller again. So at the amplifier end, when you come out to this, you would an amplifier that can amplify from a very, very tiny amount. And so if you have a poor amplifier, you won't get the best out of a moving coil. If we go back to the instruments, the moving iron ammeter, the moving coil ammeter. Dr. McCulloch, my physics teacher, taught me that the moving coil was always more expensive to make and more accurate. It's a more accurate measuring device. It can go up to higher frequencies. And moving magnet cartridges, for a variety of reasons, tend to roll off from 12, 15 kilohertz. Some people say, oh, well, it's very high, it doesn't really matter. Well, there's still a lot of information up there and some of you might be young enough to hear it. So it's really important to get as much as you can. A moving coil cartridge can have an output to 100 kilohertz. As a measuring device, a moving coil uh, is much, much more accurate. So uh, uh, it is more accurate, but it's a lot more expensive. So the Typical moving magnet cartridge might be starting at 20 or 30 pounds. A really good one might be 100 pounds. A really, really good one might be 250 pounds. The most expensive ones are probably five or 600 pounds. And though there are moving coil cartridges at two or 300 pounds, frankly, a decent one that I would want to own starts at about 500 pounds for a moving coil cartridge because it's a difficult thing to make and they are expensive. The other thing is a moving magnet, because the coils are fixed to the body, you can take the stylus off, throw it away and uh, buy a new one. The moving coil, the coils are all the way through onto the end of the cantilever. So that means you can't have a detachable stylus that you throw away. Uh, side note, some people will go, oh yes you can, Audio Technica used to make one. Yeah they did, it wasn't very good. But you have better ones are all fixed. So typically when you need your stylus replaced, you will get an allowance on your old one from the company against a new one. So someone like Riga that makes moving coil cartridges will give you an allowance for your old cartridge against uh, a new one and they will have that back and refurbish it. So um, whenever you ask the question, people say, well, at the end, Michael, which is better? Well, 90% of cartridges that we sell on turntables are moving magnets. And that's because it's a factor of cost. If you've got a higher level turntable, a higher end Briga, Lin, whatever it happens to be, with a decent tone arm on it as well, because that's really important, then you will end up with a moving coil. And frankly, the sound of the moving coil on high frequencies, the sound of the instruments and the strings and the voices, much more open, much more pleasant. I would always recommend that you have a moving coil if it's in the context of the right system. So there we are, that's how a cartridge works. That's the difference between moving coil and moving magnet. Uh, do like, subscribe, um, all that kind of stuff. And uh, we'll do another one soon and keep in touch. Uh, quite a few people have been asking questions as well. Um, so I've answered, I think, all of those. So if you do have a question arising, certainly send it in, do an answer, and uh, uh, we'll, we'll be able to sort you out with that. Thanks again to uh, Brenton and Jamie. See you next time. Bye.